Welcome to 400 years of Britain and India. Today we're going to be cooking an 18th century curry in the style that became very popular during the Victorian period. And this is the kind of curry that they were talking about. Now, Chef, I don't expect you to know how to cook a Victorian curry. So I'll tell you the recipe. Okay. So cut your chickens to pieces as you would for uh, a fricassee. They, uh, that is already done. Yeah, with the skin on, so you've kept right, the skin yes, on. Put yeah. them into a stew pan with a piece of butter right. the size of a large walnut. Right. I have so, very large walnuts, so yeah. I'll just put that yeah, in. Yeah, stick it in. Yeah. I think you are thinking you should melt the butter first, but, but I think the, the Victorians that, that, would just yeah, shove it in. They just shove it in, right, <laughs> so that's it, it's all in. And then you have to season it with black pepper, cayenne pepper, and salt. Well, I'm hoping to be trying to enjoy this as well, so I like a lot of black pepper. So, so this I'm... recipe is very similar to the first curry recipe, which was published in a cookbook in 1747. That's the first known published curry recipe in Britain, in a book published by Hannah Glass. And she actually recommended that you use separate spices, as you would in an Indian dish. Right. And she said, first, yeah. first coriander on a clean shovel over a fire. So right, that's what she it's okay. To do. I didn't have a shovel, but I did have a really nice metal uh, flat pan. So this is a cane pepper, which yeah. we'll ground into a chili powder. Um, we have cumin seeds. Mm -hmm. These are fenugreek seeds, which is part of the recipe. And one of my favourites, coriander seeds. Mm, good. We have roasted them last night and put them in a mortar and pestle like this and it, I, I have started to do this because I find it takes a lot of elbow grease so I've been doing this for about an hour that's to make a curry morning. powder that's right yeah, okay, yeah, let's do that. yeah right. over time the British did start to take shortcuts and Hannah Glass's recipe started to use curry powder as you were right. showing me the main ingredient is turmeric isn't right, it right yes so she says turmeric eight ounces which is a hell of a lot of turmeric <laughs> 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 Given that Indian cooks use yeah, it very yeah, sparingly, yeah, yeah, yeah. turmeric imparts this lovely yellowy, golden, yes, red yeah. colour to food. To be able to put on the table a dish that is coloured in that way made you seem like a fancy, exotic... Yeah. I wonder you showed if off they... your credentials. So what do we do next? It says cover them and set it over a slow fire for 10 minutes. Right. The three books in the 18th and 19th century would borrow from old cookery books. Mrs. Beaton's cookery book is actually just a co collection mm. of recipes from other cookery books. So Hannah Glass's first curry recipe evolved a little bit until by the 1780s she had this standard curry, yeah. was her, became the standard curry recipe. And that became the template that all other curry recipes used. Yes, we need a quarter of a large onion the point about it is as well that Hannah Glass had never been to India. She doesn't know what the end flavour should be. And that's the problem. She sets up the template for how all British people are going to cook curries. Initial she no template Delia recipe. Smith, I think mm, we I can think agree not. right. A small tablespoonful of curry powder to two chickens. I think go with four, just go in with case. Four. Yeah. yeah, go with four. Otherwise, Since they liked it so spicy. Yeah, yeah, go for four. This is very unusual for me now to add onions, <laughs> raw onions. After and, the spices. Yeah. I know, it's all wrong. We've gone to the stage of where literally we're boiling the onions, and this would uh, this is, uh, we'll just leave that raw onion in taste. Right. So we need so to put the parsley go. in, and then put half a pint of gravy. Right. But I think we should wait for it to fry for a few minutes yes, yeah. because otherwise it'll taste disgusting. When the British cooks first started cooking they did try to use separate spices but over time they took these shortcuts and started making their own curry powders and we've used Mr Arnott's curry powder yeah. that was published in a cookery book. But then commercial companies got the idea that actually it would be a good idea if you just you could package curry powder so the very first curry powder factory was in Madras. And so in the 1780s, you start to see in newspapers adverts for commercial curry powders. And they say, oh, new really? curry wow. powders coming over and stocked in our warehouse in London, shipped in from Madras and so on. And so instead of going to the chemist, which is where you'd have bought your separate mm. spices, you could go to your grocer or your warehouseman and buy your tins of curry powder. Wow. And they came in three flavours. Uh, a very yellow one, which was mild, a brown one, which had more cumin in, which was medium, and a very hot one with more cayenne in, which of course was red. Well, I'm adding that lots of cumin. You're adding the turmeric. No Indian cook 
would use curry powder ever. You, you, you don't use a pre-mixed masala of spices ever because it's spices go stale very quickly so you want to grind them, roast them and grind them and use them fresh. But this is absolutely typical of how the British would have made their curries. And then you'd leave that to cook. One of the things that later on in the Victorian period, they would add apple quite often. Oh, really? Okay. I think to add a bit right. of sweetness. You know, they talk about, oh, lemon being a very good substitute for tamarind. Right. So she, she adds at the end, if you can get any cushiony pickle, and we don't know what that is. Well, cushiony pickle uh, is um, anything with mango or lime type ah, of pickle. You so know yes, what it yeah. is. yes, oh, that's well right. Done. Yes. The British thought of curries as being a British dish. They, it's just not an Indian thing anymore. Yeah. Instead, they've turned it into a kind of British casserole, a, an Indianized curry flavored stew. At the end of the 19th century, the British really celebrated having the Raj. So they had a series of exhibitions where they actually recreated Indian villages. And after you'd wandered around and had a look, you could then see the various products that came from India, like tea like and so Like a Disneyland almost. Like a Disneyland, yes, yes, yeah? Yes, yeah. And then there would often be an Indian right. cafe where you could go wow, and have okay. curries as they would have eaten in India, these cafes were very popular and that's where one of the first Indian restaurants to be set up in Britain comes from, from the Wembley Exhibition in the 1920s and it's called Viraswamis and it's still there. So you had Viraswamis but you also had a few, a couple of Indian restaurants called Shafis and run by the Bahadur brothers called Koh Noor, set up for Indian re uh, yeah. students and there were also an awful lot of Lascars. Who, quite a lot of whom had jumped ship and a lot of them found jobs in the catering industry and quite a few of them went through those mm. restaurants, Shafri's and Koh mm -hmm. and Vera Swami's yes, yeah. and learnt their trade there and they would set up a little cafe and they would serve the things the cafe always had served like chips yes. and then they added a bit of curry and that's how the tradition of having curry and chips started because you might have a bit of curry sauce mm. on your chips. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's do you think we should stir it? Yeah. That's when the no, Indian think, restaurant yeah. No, explosion fine. starts. Slowly yeah, away. let's leave it to stew yeah. for a bit longer. In the late 1950s, the immigration laws changed, and a lot of Indian immigrants came over to work in the textile industries, and then they would train up their kids to work in the restaurant after right, them. Right. But uh, in the 1980s, they would say we're an Indian restaurant because the association with the Raj in India was so Absolutely, strong yes, yeah, that it yeah. encouraged yeah. British people to come in. Yeah. And they served the kind of food the British really liked to eat in India. So those are slightly different from the Victorian mm. curries. So adapted kormas, a dansak. Mm -hmm. I mean, through human history, it's climate and culture that defines what you eat, dictated what your So you have all these was. regional That's styles right, regions, of cooking. And, and Punjab recipes tend to be more milder dishes because yeah. of the climate. It's, it's yeah. very cold climate. And spices were used as more as a preservative rather than vegan. So the, spy, the hotter the climate, the spicier the food, the milder the climate, the milder foods, and those dishes uh, t tend to be a lot milder with creams and fruit and... And the Victorians in the, eight, or the 18th century and the Victorians managed to boil down all that variety of regional <laughs> yeah, yeah. foods into this one yeah. dish which we're going to have a Do look you know at what? now. From the smell of it and everything, whatever... It doesn't smell I too can, bad. It doesn't smell too bad. Well, if you imagine British food at the time was pretty bland. Yes. So that at would that have time, made something very interesting. Is our guinea pig still here? One final ingredient. Here is the lemon. Piece <laughs> of lemon juice in. So just give it right. a really hefty squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it good? <laughs> That's brilliant. I say Claire, it's good. <laughs> huh? What did you think of this? No, actually, it's, it's got this intriguing taste. If you don't expect it to be Indian food as you know it. Sure, yeah. I knew that this had gravy in it, but that flavour comes out really well with the spices. <laughs> the I can taste the spices, they're raw, they're not cooked. Yeah. Yeah. Are they? Uh, that, that's expected. what happens when you boil it rather than fry uh, Yeah, and the onions yeah. Yeah. shouldn't have gone in last. This distinctive curry powder flavour, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It Which sure I is. think is the turmeric and fenugreek. Fenugreek was a cheap spice. Okay, so chef, will you be putting that on the menu? Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Honestly, this has been very entertaining but very sort of educational as well. To know, I didn't know about this recipe, uh, how sort of in the 18th century, all those years ago, how popular curry was. A fascinating insight, but no, um, yeah. Um, we'll stay nothing, off the menu. No, you'll, you'll stay.
Thanks for watching, guys. I hope yep. you learned a lot.